Hey, welcome to another video of me trying to answer most frequently asked data science core questions under two minutes. What are some actual projects data scientists have worked on? So this will vary a lot everywhere, whoever you ask. I would suggest you go to my podcast, So You Want to Be a Data Scientist? question mark podcast you can find it on any of the podcast providers there i interview data scientists and data professionals and they tell me all about their projects so that could be a good resource to check out but just to give you an example i'll tell you my first project the first project i ever did did we were trying to predict how long a task should they take for a developer to finish this was a big bank and we were trying to do some uh time management basically the second one uh is actually an example from the podcast, this is um, from a research lab and they were trying to predict how much energy a building in their campus would spend in a given day and this way they are going to try to manage the um, energy that is uh, sent to this building or in general spent in the campus. And the last one is something that I recently worked on. It is uh, a project we, where we are trying to classify people or understand based on the health records of uh, patients if they might have or if they should be tested for a certain disease or not. Of course this includes challenges as natural language understanding because most of the health records are written in natural language. So these are some examples that I can give you under two minutes. How can I learn Python or how can I learn R? So this is a very common question, of course. I get this question from my audience too. So it's actually not that hard, as in, uh, you just need to take a course. You don't have to worry about it. Just take a Python basics course. You just need to understand how coding works, if you don't know that yet, and you just need to understand how Python or R works. You really, really don't have to be a Python or R wizard. I definitely am not. I've, I'm learning new things about Python every single day, and there are a lot of things about how Python works as a programming language that I have no idea about. So what I would say is just take a course, get to a comfortable level, and by comfortable, I mean like understand when you see a line of code, get to a point where you can understand that line of code and just practice, start writing some code, get a piece of data, try to understand the new libraries, try to use pandas. And that's basically, you know, that's also how you learn. That's how I learned. I never actually took a course about Python. I just knew some other programming language. And then I started fiddling around in Python. I tried doing something and then I failed and I went on Stack Overflow, I went on Google. And then all of a sudden I accumulated so much knowledge that people actually start coming to me for advice and help. So just don't be shy, take a course, learn a little bit of the fundamentals and then practice by yourself. And every time you fail, just push forward, push forward. And before you know it, you'll already be uh, the person that people come to for advice. Should I do a master's in data science? So. This is a hard question to give a yes or no answer to. If you want to read my more than two minute thoughts on this, I will leave a link to a article that I've written about this before. It's, it's, it's like specifically about this question. Um, but to give my two minute answer, it's basically, it will depend on your intention. If all you want is a traditional degree that, that will make you, if that's going to make you happier, just definitely go ahead and do it. But if that's not the case, if all you want is to become a data scientist, then there are a lot more things that you have to consider. For example, how is this degree or specific school in comparison to other schools that people might get a, a degree from? What are the courses that are being taught there? Are they going to be satisfying you? Maybe it's going to be too easy for you. Maybe it's going to be too advanced for you. Maybe you don't want to learn that much. Uh, in, you don't want to go in that much detail. Is that going to be a practical master's degree? Is that going to be a very theoretical master's degree? You really have to know these things. And also, as, again, as I said, it really has to align with what you want to do in the future of your life. Do you want to get a data science job now? Do you want to get a data science job if you're okay with getting a data science job in two years? These are some important things that you have to uh, have an answer to before you decide to do a master's degree or not. If it's possible, I would probably recommend you instead to study a little bit alone and maybe get an internship and get some experience there because you're going to learn much more about data science from the people who are actually working as a data scientist actively 
in the fields. And I think that would probably help you more in terms of getting a job because you'll already have some professional experience. How do I learn machine learning? So again, very big question. <laughs> you can go and check out my uh, long article about this also. It's it's more about which courses to take to become a data scientist, kind of like, a, you know, a couple, I have a couple of uh, different options of, you know, if you want to become a more theoretical one, more practical one, etc, etc. I'll again leave the link below uh, the video for this. Uh, but basically, it's kind of similar. What I'm going to say is kind of similar to how do I become a data scientist. First, you need to understand what machine learning is, I think. If you just dive into a course, it might get too complicated too fast. So try to read about like the high level. What does machine learning do? Why is that a thing? How does it help? Uh, why are people so hyped up about it? And then after that, you can find a course. Uh, of course, this is, I'm assuming that in terms of become a data scientist, you already made a plan of like what you want to learn so that you don't go too deep unnecessarily. So let's say you already have that plan. And then you can take a course like Andrew and D's course, for example, is a very, very uh, good course about that. So you can choose one, choose one course and then see if it's especially math wise too complicated for you. If it is, write down what math didn't you understand and then maybe go study it. So I don't think you have to have this like perfect line of like, I learned enough math to go to the next level. No, go to this level, see if you're not there yet, come back, study a little bit more and go back there. So it doesn't always have to be a perfect flow. Give yourself some chances to also fail in between so that at the end, I think it will make you go faster rather than trying to decide and having this like decision paralysis. And lastly, of course, practice. You're just going to have to take some projects of your own. Uh, maybe take my hands on data science course on completing your first portfolio project. And just, yeah, that would also give you some extra help. And yeah, complete some projects, get your hands dirty. And that way you're just going to understand, you know, like when you read something, like you'll understand the concepts better because when you read something, Okay, it says this can never be done or like this is not efficient and then it's very hard for you to memorize this. But when you do something on machine learning and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, this didn't work. Then you're like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, I remember reading about this. This doesn't work because of this. And now it's just going to be a lesson that you're never going to forget. What are some good toy problems in data science? So I don't think there is like a list of toy problems anywhere. Uh, not that I've seen, but... I will again refer you to one of my articles, uh, five data pursuits to take your mind off the pandemic. I'll leave a link below the video again. Um, but other than that one, uh, I there I talk about downloading some of your own data from social media, for example, from Google Maps, creating your own data by surveying yourself for a couple of months. I think that's a really interesting one. Just maybe ask yourself daily questions about how do you feel? Have you, have you eaten today? Have you seen people today? I've done that once. It was pretty fun. Uh, other than that, I think Kaggle is a very good source of toy data sets. Um, specifically, I mean, the classics, you know, the Titanic data set, the, uh, the Iris data set. I think there is a data set on heart disease. Um, yeah, and that, that one doesn't include a lot of complications or it's not very complex, but it's very easy to understand. But it's still, you know, some of the some of the ones that I said are numerical, some of the ones that I said it has categorical data. So I think those ones would be interesting for you. But I'll leave some specific links below this video to some toy data sets. Whew, okay, that was hard, but I think I managed to again answer all the questions under two minutes. There might be a couple of them that are a little bit too long, but there are also a couple of them that are too short. Anyways, <laughs> so thanks for watching the video again, and I'll see you around.